This is my VR router. I have it in the hallway on the second floor so it can reach everyone's bedrooms. I get a perfect connection to my room, and I also get a perfect connection downstairs in the living room where I play on my laptop. When I was using my old Wi-Fi 5 router, a lot of these numbers were yellow, which means really bad. And the max bitrate was very low, so it was really laggy, and whenever I would move my head quickly, it would like stutter. But now with my new Wi-Fi 6 router, I can get up to 200 megabits per second on AirLink, and honestly, I never even need to go that high. I fully recommend my router, which is called the Netgear Wax 202, and I think at the time it cost like less than 50 bucks, and yeah, the link to buy is in the description. And I'm going to answer some questions, such as should you use AirLink or virtual desktop, and I'm also going to show you some alternatives in case you need more range, or you need more features, or you need to like connect a lot of devices. And then finally, at the end of the video, I'm going to show you the best settings for your router and how to set it up. Question number one, do you really need Wi-Fi 6? Well, virtual desktop and AirLink will work without it, but like your maximum bitrate will be really low and it'll probably stutter when you have like really fast action. And considering that you can upgrade for $50 or less, I think that if you don't upgrade, you're kind of a sucker. W wait, you're not a sucker, are you? Okay, good, I'm talking to a smart person. Question number two, do you need Wi-Fi 6E? Well, the answer is no, because the Quest 2 doesn't even support Wi-Fi 6E. And if you're wondering what Wi-Fi 6E even does, Basically, it's only good for like congested areas such as cafes and airports. So since we just want to play VR at home, we don't really care about Wi-Fi 6E. Question number three, how many megabits per second is good? Well, if you're going to beautiful worlds in VR chat or you want to play like some fast paced action games, I think that 120 megabytes is more than enough. And if you need more, then virtual desktop goes to 150 and AirLink actually goes to 200 megabits per second. But lately, to like conserve battery life and bandwidth, I've been trying to play at like 80 megabits or lower, and it seems perfectly fine to me. The good news is that whether you're using virtual desktop or AirLink, you can change your bitrate on the fly without affecting anything. So literally, like, just play with it until you find the lowest number that you're satisfied with. I promise that changing the bitrate during a game won't break anything. Question number four, should your Wi-Fi network be 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz? Well, the difference between them is that 5 gigahertz is stronger, but it has less range. So naturally, that's the one you want to use. I recommend having your router as close to you as possible, preferably in your room, and you should set your VR network to 5 gigahertz. Question number five, how many devices can you have on your 5 gigahertz network? So a lot of guys recommend that you should only have your Oculus Quest on your 5 gigahertz network and no other device. But for me personally, I put my laptop and I put my smartphone on it and it doesn't lag me in any way. So I think that you're also safe to put your laptop and your smartphone on it. But one thing I do do is I put the rest of my family members on the shitty slow 2.4 gigahertz network. You can't have them interfere with your VR time. Question number six, how much latency is good? So personally, my latency is always around 40 seconds according to virtual desktop, and that's just fine for me. You could get it down to 30 or lower by like lowering and tweaking your graphics settings, but in my opinion, it's not really worth it. Because if you're playing online games like VRChat or Pavlov, you already have lag when you're connecting to another person's server. So therefore, like saving 10 milliseconds on your side is not going to do much. If you want my personal experience, then like I usually have 200 milliseconds to the VRChat servers. And like my voice sounds fine and I can have conversations and it literally doesn't affect anything. So I would say don't worry about latency and 40 is just fine. Question number seven, is it okay to buy from Amazon Renewed? Just psychologically, I prefer new products, but Amazon Renewed is cheaper and has a 90 day satisfaction guarantee where you can return it, whereas new products only have a 30 day return window. So like, it should be fine. Question number eight, should you use AirLink or virtual desktop? Well, you should always, always use AirLink first because it comes free with all Oculus Quest 2s. And also, even though it's free and virtual desktop is paid, the maximum bitrate goes up to 200, whereas virtual desktop only goes to 150. Although in practice, there's not that much difference. If you want to know what I use, then I use virtual desktop because like it doesn't have the Oculus dashboard, so therefore it uses less resources. Also, it's a lot more tweakable. You can change a lot of settings related to graphics and FPS and stuff. Now, virtual desktop is pretty expensive. It can be 20 to $30 depending on the sale. But personally, I have a thousand hours in VRChat so $30 is not that bad for a thousand hours of fun. And finally, question number nine, should you install OpenWRT custom firmware? So if you don't know what that is, it's basically like jailbreaking your router and getting you like a bunch of features that it doesn't have normally. And that sounds really good, but the bottom line is you don't need it because all we want to do is like get good graphics and a stable connection to VR. And we can do that with any of the recommended routers in this video right out of the box. The thing with custom firmware is that if you mess up like installing them, you can brick your router and then you basically wasted all your money. So yeah, unless you're a hacker type and you really, really know what you're doing, Basically, do not install custom firmware on your router, even though it's really, really good if you can get it working. So the Wax 202 works fine for me because my house is kind of open, but let's face it, there's no antenna sticking out, so the range is kind of low. So if you need more range or features or like the ability to connect a lot of devices, then these are some alternatives you should look into. The first one on the list is the Asus RT AX55, and this one is actually recommended by the creator of Virtual Desktop. Compared to the Wax 202, it has more range, more features, and has the ability to like link different compatible routers to make like a Wi-Fi mesh network. So if having that sort of network sounds useful to you, then this could be a good buy. This router is the best value router on this list, and like, I would have gotten it except for two things. At the time of shopping, the Wax 202 was on like a really, really big sale. And also my house is like kind of open, so I decided to gamble and bet that I didn't need the extra range. 
But yeah, if you just want something that works perfectly for VR and you don't want to like think too much, this is the one to buy. The link to buy it is in the description, and if you do decide to buy it, I make a really small commission and it costs you nothing extra, so that's nice. The next one on the list is the Asus RT86U. So this one has amazing speed, range, and device capacity, and it also comes with a lot of quality of life features. Like you can toggle if you want to prioritize like gaming or streaming or like uh, sending files. And also the included software has really powerful tools for monitoring, performing diagnostics, and also like putting parental controls. So that's pretty helpful if you have kids. And also it's good for people who have like Wi-Fi security systems or they have like the smart home internet of things in their house. So if that sounds like you, then definitely check out this router. But if you're just a gamer like me, you can get one of the cheaper ones. And finally, we have the Asus ROG Rapture GTAX 11000 Pro. So this router actually has a 64-bit quad-core CPU in it. So it's like you have a mini PC powering your network. So you have absolutely zero compromises in terms of power, speed, range, features, and device capacity. And unlike all the other routers on this list, it's future-proof because you can get the 6E version as well. But it is a luxury item, so only get it if you need to like connect and manage a bunch of devices over a really large area. And some of you guys might be asking like, who the hell even needs this for VR? But like, I did some research on Reddit and like, there's people who are trying to play wireless VR like across an entire warehouse or like across like a, a cornfield or something. Like, I don't know, people have the freedom to play VR however they want. And if people want to play across an entire warehouse, then I guess they should buy this thing. It might also be useful if you're like a landlord or something. I don't know. Now I'm going to show you how to set up your router for the best wireless VR experience. First, I just want to do the first time setup, which is different for every brand and model. It's pretty easy. Basically, you just set up your name and your password. By the way, my router's login is always admin and my password is always password. So come hack me. Just kidding. Then once you get to the main menu, you want to make your main network 5.0 gigahertz only. This one is going to be for a VR headset. And if you're like me, you can add your laptop and your smartphone as well. Some guys tell you to only have your headset on it. But personally, I don't notice any extra lag when I add my laptop and my smartphone. The Oculus Quest 2 supports WPA3, which is the most secure password system. So you should use that. After that, you want to enable a second network that's 2.4 gigahertz only. This one is going to be used for the rest of your family members. If you have people in your house with old devices, then you might have to put the security to WPA2. If you see any options that mention isolation, you want to enable all those because it'll increase your security even more. Also, disable access to the GUI if you're not going to personally use this network. And that's it. Upgrading to a Wi-Fi 6 router is really cheap and easy, so if you use AirLink or Virtual Desktop, I really, really think you should upgrade. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And if you want to know more VRChat tips, as well as the best gear to buy, then like and subscribe. See you next week.